Good morning, folks. We've got news on every front today. Weather, earthquakes, space weather, solar forcing, and the magnetic universe. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star with the bright active region having crept into view. The solar wind is relatively calm and the solar flaring has only cracked up into C-class range, but we will be monitoring over the coming week because that sunspot has now crested onto the Earth-facing disk and does retain plasma activity in the corona above it. Beta magnetism at the moment, strong electric motion in the penumbra shown on the Doppler gram as well. While we're monitoring for solar flaring, Earth is magnetically connecting to the southern coronal hole and the equatorial West Pacific and Eastern Indonesia are rocking with blood echoes. That's an earthquake watch. But the weather has more than an unfavorable outlook. It's plain bad. Cyclone Fani whacked Bangladesh with nearly as much force as it hit India. Over a thousand homes destroyed. And a not too unfamiliar situation is unfolding along the Mississippi. Our spring forecast for a repeat of the 2011 spring is sadly looking like it's right on the mark and set to get worse. We're going to kick off science news with strong solar flares and a study of their effects on Mars missions. Dr. Dunning will be pleased to see his analysis thoroughly broken out and concluding that these flares could kill the astronauts we send there. We'll go next to a slightly larger scale, like the whole universe. FizRev D is one of the places that major cosmological papers can be found, and this one attempts to release dark energy with cosmic scale magnetic fields. Essentially, even though we can't see them, even though they are very weak, magnetic fields that span the entire universe are likely constructs of even the mainstream cosmological evolution, and it's the magnetic forces spanning the cosmos tricking others into thinking it's dark energy. Now, it's time to go next level on a new paper, using other new papers and some established science. A review of solar forcing on the total atmosphere has taken a baby step forward. They have recognized stronger solar heating effects on the upper atmosphere than have been traditionally modeled. But they also describe the tropospheric effect as unclear, but definitively small. And sadly, they have a long way to go to reach reality. First, they did use computer modeling rather than pure observation. And second, they are using the solar irradiance modeling of energy incident on the upper atmosphere only up to the extreme ultraviolet. Well, the first thing they left out was cosmic rays and their effect on clouds. New paper out this week confirming dozens of previous ones dictating that it's not just lower output by the sun in minima periods, but the reduction of light hitting the surface and increase in albedo. Ionize the air, attract the dust and vapor, and thicken the clouds. Of course, the models used to determine ocean heat release have never begun to consider the modulation of solar forcing on El Nino, North Atlantic Oscillation, Semi-Permanent Cell Modulation, or Monsoon Forcing, and that one is very important. Another new paper confirming about 10 previous ones showing that the Asian monsoon could collapse in a grand minimum period, which is bad for the 4 to 5 billion people there who depend on it. Of course, the single most important thing left out of the new study is the particle forcing. The CMIP6 particle forcing datasets have now been available for two years, and no mainstream climate scientist has yet had the stones to use it. Furthermore, by halting at extreme ultraviolet, they miss the X-ray modulation of the ionosphere, which energizes the particle flow delivery system through the atmosphere in the global electric circuit. This is not easy to model, no denying that, but we've also danced way past the point of ignoring true processes on this electrodynamic planet. Everything relevant to this topic is found in our textbook, we are entering finals weeks here for the universities using it, and my wife Kat, our CEO, is celebrating that and little Kira's birthday month. Everyone who gets a copy of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun will also get a copy of Kira and Lulu Visit the Sun for free while supplies last. Also got some locational relevant coupon codes to take even more off the deal. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. otf.cells.com is the only place to get the book and observer's gear. Weekly podcast posted for website members over at suspiciousobservers.org yesterday. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.